chapter 34. Moreover, Elihu answered and said, Hear my words, you wise men. Give ear unto me, you that have knowledge. For the ear trieth words, as the palate tasteth food. Let us choose for us that which is right. Let us know among ourselves what is good. For Job hath said, I am righteous, and God hath taken away my right. Notwithstanding my right, I am accounted a liar. My wound is incurable, though I am without transgression. What man is like Job, who drinketh up scorning like water, who goeth in company with workers of iniquity, and walketh with wicked men? For he hath said, It profiteth a man nothing that he should be in accord with God. Therefore hearken unto me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. For the work of a man will he requite unto him, and cause every man to find according to his ways. Yea, of a surety God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert justice. Who gave him a charge over the earth, or who hath disposed the whole world? If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself the spirit in his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall return unto dust. If now you have understanding, hear this, hearken to the voice of my words. Shall even one that hateth right govern? And wilt you condemn him that is just and mighty? Is it fit to say to a king, You are base, or to the nobles, You, you are wicked, that respecteth not the persons of princes, nor regardeth the rich more than the poor? For they all are the work of his hands. In a moment they die, even at midnight. The people are shaken and pass away, and the mighty are taken away without hand. For his eyes are upon the ways of a man, and he seeth all his goings. There is no darkness nor shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. For he doth not appoint a time unto any man when he should go before God in judgment. He breaketh in pieces mighty men without inquisition, and setteth others in their stead. Therefore he taketh knowledge of their works, and he overturneth them in the night, so that they are crushed. He striketh them as a wicked men in the open sight of others, because they turned aside from following him, and would not have regard to any of his ways. So that to cause the cry of the poor to come unto him, and he heareth the cry of the afflicted, when he giveth quietness, who then can condemn? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him, whether it be done unto a nation or unto a man alike? That the godless man reign not, that there be none to ensnare the people. For he hath said unto God, I have borne chastisement, though I offend not. That which I see not teach you me. If I have done iniquity, I will do it no more. Shall his recompense be as you will? For you loathest it, so that you must choose, and not I. Therefore speak what you know. Men of understanding will say unto me, Yea, every wise man that hears me. Job speaks without knowledge, and his words are without discernment. Would that Job were tried unto the end, because of his answering like wicked men? For he addeth rebellion unto his sin, he clappeth his hands among us, and multiplieth his words against God. All right, let's go back up in verse 1. Now Elihu, Elihu is carrying on from his last, uh, from the last chapter. And he, he told Job he wasn't going to cube Job, but he was going to try to justify him. But we'll find out that he's going to be... He's going to wind up being just like the rest of them. He's going to stand there, and he's going to finally, he's getting where he's uh, angry with Job, but because Job justi justified himself, he didn't justify God. Well, God needs no justification. Uh, God is justifies himself in his work, in the overall work of everything he does. We may see it one way for a moment, but see... That's because everything has to, something has to happen in the turn. Something has to take place in a change. And often that's the only thing we get to see is this small period of time. And things are moving slowly. We're going to pick it up here in verse 1. Uh, Moreover, Elihu answered and said, 
and once again, Elihu, he is this one who has, he's the young man, he's been sitting there listening the whole time that these gentlemen have been talking, and he's going to continue uh, with his words to Job, verse 2, hear my words, you wise men, and give ear unto me, you that have knowledge, so listen up, listen to what Elihu's got to say, he says, and all you wise men, you want you you think you have knowledge, you think you have a wisdom. Three, for the ear tries words, as the palate tasteth food. Now the ear does try words, just like your mouth can taste the difference between sour and sweet. See, we can also ta taste with our ears. Our, our own ears give us understanding, that which is right, that which is wrong. See, and a lot of times though. Um, the palate has been increased. We we it's kind of a, a blending of these of uh, these tastes to the ear, so to speak. That that is is deception. See, we can't rightfully discern every ingredient in it. For let us choose for us that which is right. Let us know among ourselves what is good. Let us choose uh, what is right. Let us, let us be the ones to discern what is correct, even for ourselves, because we'll find out when a man speaks. We can, we can tell his intentions of his words. We can tell what he's intending to do. What he's, what he, he makes known what his requirements are or what his wants are. And we can tell for ourselves if this is good or bad, five. For Job has said, I am righteous, and God has taken away my right. And that's ex exactly what Job said. I, he is righteous. I am just. I ain't done nothing wrong. But God has took away somehow my abilities and, and, and what's ever, everything that's happened to me. God's taken away this thing. Everybody's coming down. They're browbeating me, is what Job said. And and uh, I haven't done nothing wrong. Job maintained his, his integrity and that he's done nothing. He's correct in his path according to his understanding. Six. Notwithstanding my right, I am accounted a liar, and my wound is incurable, though I am without transgression. And notwithstanding this, my right, uh, that which I should be getting, uh, the recognition that I am, am a just man, and, and somehow this... this by chance has fallen upon me, as well as I am accounted a liar. Now you're now, and that's he's that's what they was doing, calling Job a liar when he was maintaining his innocence. Now they was calling him a liar, one who speaks lies, and and now his wounds incurable, because this is made known. And though I am without transgression, and Job was maintaining his. His innocence, and this is exactly what Job said. Seven, what man is like Job, who drinketh up scorning like water? And who's like now? Who's like Job? Who's like this man? He said here, claimed these things. He drinks up this scorning. I mean, everybody's sitting there accusing him of this and that, and, they, and Job's just drinking it up like water, like it's understanding because Job's not done nothing. Eight, who goes in the company with the workers of iniquity, and walks with wicked men. Who goes in the company, who, who's who been seen, he's been seen with these men, who, workers of iniquity, these ones who, uh, of, of perversion, and they, he walks with wicked men, he's been seen hanging around these guys. We'll find out. Job was a man who fed the poor. He helped those uh, wayward people who was lost. Sure, he was seen in the company of those. Nine. For he has said it profits a man nothing that he should be in accord with God. For Job said it doesn't profit a man nothing. It profits a man nothing. A man doesn't gain anything for being in agreement with God. Uh, and so much is that you know, one just sits around and he, he claims in his agreement. There's, there's no uh, work. We, we have nothing to actually show. Uh, your work, I mean, something that you do, it, to just be in a in accord with God uh, would gain you nothing. Uh, this uh, the covenant, so to speak, 
because uh, that's what it is. It's kind of like an agreement. Uh, we we have to have some form of work to show that that we have an understanding. Ten. Therefore, hearken unto me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. Therefore, listen now. Once again, Allah saying, you men of understanding, you men of uh, that have knowledge, uh, and just what that knowledge is and what that understanding is, it could be a matter of debate, see. The understanding is the law of God, the ordinance of God. That's what God said in the beginning. This is what I give you for your understanding. This is your knowledge. This is your wisdom. Far be it from God that he should do wickedness. Far, far be it from God. Well, this wouldn't be the f way God would work. Uh, for, for wickedness, see, we'll find out. There's always a, a greater plan in God's understanding. And from all the Almighty that he should commit iniquity or that he should do perversion. Pervert that which is right. Eleven. For the work of man will he require unto him, and cause every man to find according to his ways. For the work of man will he require, and that's and that's really what we see. See, God made it a free will thing in the beginning. He gives you a choice. See, and that's what it basically boils down to: uh, whether you're going to do right or wrong. And it is a fact that to do it, not to all just talk about it uh, one day out of the week or two. We we have to have an action to go with that word, because God's going to require unto every man according to His work, and, we, and it shows up in society. See, it manifests itself in society. This work of man, these things which He does to pervert even uh, justice, but it's not it's not God who does these things. Twelve. Yea, of a surety, God will not do wickedly. Neither will He will the Almighty pervert justice. God doesn't do these things. God doesn't pervert justice. Man does that. That's man's doings. That's what man does. See, and, and these wicked men even, because this is how they work. They pervert just, justice. So that which was right is wrong, and that which is wrong becomes right. See, because that's, that's all they can do with their laws and with their understandings. And God recompenses this upon their head, and it shows up in society. And this is what causes oppression. And when the people are oppressed, they scream out, and God hears them, and God will come to the rescue. 13. Who gave him a charge over the earth, or who hath disposed the whole earth? Who, who gave God charge over the earth? Who uh, appointed him the boss? Who, who disposed the whole world to God? Who gave him control over everything? 14. If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself the spirit in his breath. So we're going to find out who give him charge because, see, if God was to set his heart upon man, set his full understanding upon man, uh, come against him with everything he had, so to speak, if he gather unto himself his spirit, and his breath, and that would be the end of it all right there if he would just gather to himself his spirit or his truth, his understanding, his, his knowledge is, that goes forth, and his breath, that's that of life which he breathed into, you see, that, that gives life. 15. All flesh should perish together, and man shall return into the dust, and that's what exactly what would happen. All flesh should perish together. And all flesh, anything made in the earth, all earth would perish together. And man should return into the dust. And that's exactly what happened. Man would just turn back into the dirt uh, from where he came from. And that's what it would happen to everything. It would just turn back into the dirt that, that it came from. Trees, plants, animals, all things alike. 16. If now you have understanding, hear this. Hearken to the voice of my words. Now, if you can understand anything, listen. This, and hearken, or give heed to these words. 17. Shall even one that hateth right govern? 
and wilt you condemn him that is just and mighty? Should one that hates right govern? Uh, this man, he would never get to that point if these things were made known, that he hated all things that was right, that he hated all things that was correct. But we'll find out in history many times men who had the best of intentions went astray, see, in their understandings. Uh, and they, they think they're right, but we'll find out there's great wickedness in their works. And there's many an evil king that had ruled, just to make a long story short. And wilt you condemn him that is just and mighty? Will, will you condemn a man that is just and mighty, though? Of course not, because if a man proves himself to be just, if a man proves himself to be mighty, how should he be condemned? 18. Is it fit to say to a king, you are base, or to the nobles, you are wicked? Is it fit to say... In some cases, it may be proper, but we'll find out uh, the, a king, the, to say to the king, you are base, but we'll find out the king has the, sits on the, root, the throne, and it's God sets the king on the throne, so how can you say he's base when he's sitting on the throne? Or to the nobles, you are wicked. Or to the nobles, those those ones who have uh, set themselves up, how can you say they're wicked? Because they have acquired the seat. 19. That respecteth not the persons of princes, nor regardeth the rich more than the poor, for they all are the work of his hands. How can you uh, say that when these that that respect not the persons of princes, nor regardeth the rich more than the poor, they don't have... No, they're not respecters of persons, and that, that is to take notice with eyes uh, of a difference in the uh, a value, a monetary value pay, placed on people. That's the difference between rich and poor. In flesh, we could take that understanding, but now in spirit, that doesn't do. Those that are rich uh, in understanding, those that have a lot, uh, well, then there's those that are poor they are without understanding they don't have knowledge nobody gave them the law in the beginning they didn't have understanding see they're like children that have to be taught that would be a uh, the difference there 20 in a moment they die even at midnight the people are shaken and pass away and the mighty are taken away without hand in a moment they die and just one day they're here, next day they're gone. That's generally the way things are because we don't know that hour, that moment that it's going to happen. Even at midnight, uh, midnight is that, that we're halfway through the darkness. We're halfway through the darkness, middle of the night. Uh, to still be in the darkness when one passes to die, that's to not have light. The people are shaken and they pass away. And the mighty are taken away without hand. There's, there's no, nobody come and killed them. See, they, there was nothing done. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, it wouldn't matter if you was the, uh, one of the nobles, one of the kings, one of the princes, one of the rulers, or the lowest of all peasants. You would, if we look at it with that kind of understanding, they, uh, it doesn't matter because see, all are equal in the eyes of God, and God knows what's gone going on 21 for his eyes are upon the ways of a man and he seeth all his goings for god sees what's going on and and it's not just for the man the individual will find out it's for the overall people the overall man mankind itself even 22 there is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves not to god there isn't, because God sees all things. You can't hide from God. Oh, they think they do, because they what they're doing is they're ignorant for one thing, but they hide in their understandings and, and, and trap those that are of a general-like understanding. They lay wait for these, and they think they can hide there in the shadows of death, but we'll find out not from God you can't. 23 for he doth not appoint a time unto 
any man when he should go before God in judgment. For he doth not appoint a time unto any man. God doesn't appoint a time. God doesn't say, well, uh, next week at 2 o'clock he's done. We're taking him out. No, no, no. That's, it doesn't work like that, see. But slowly now, we create that day for ourselves even until finally God's had all he can take. And it, it's time for you to go. He's going to make an example out of you. Because, see, God's not, God's giving you every chance you can get. He's, he's making every, he's getting every, giving you every chance he can give you. And really, that's what God wants to do. He give you every chance he can, because God wants you to turn. God wants you to return into his understanding, see. 24, he breaketh in pieces mighty men without inquisition, and, se and setteth others in their stead. God breaks into pieces mighty men without inquisition, without questioning. There's no questioning. In it. See, we know God is just. We know God is right. He brings those down. He exalts them. He, he's, he, God exalts them for one reason. He, his plan is to cast them down so he can make an example and setteth up others in their stead. He just replaces them. It's a very simple thing for God. 25. Therefore he takes knowledge of their works, and he overturneth them in the night, so that they are crushed. Therefore, or for this reason, see, we know God takes knowledge of their works. God's watching what they're doing. You don't got to worry about them, because God's going to take them out. He overturns them in the night, in the darkness, in their lack of understanding, see, so that they are crushed. And they are being crushed. They're crushed beneath the feet of God. We're not talking about those that are oppressed. Those are those that are crying out. We're talking about those that think they're getting away with oppression. They themselves are being crushed. 26. He striketh them as a wicked men. He strikes them as wicked men in the open sight of others. And that's what he does. He's, he will punish them. He will make it known so everybody can see that... That God done that. God strikes them. God punishes them. It's 27. Because they turn aside from following him and would not have regard to any of his ways. Because they turn aside from following him. They, they don't listen to God. They don't hear God. They don't understand God. This is what the wicked do. They don't have any regard for God's ways or God's understandings. See, they... They want to be in control. They think they have always the best path. They don't understand that they, there's already a path appointed. 28. So that they cause the cry of the poor to come unto him. And he hears the cry of the afflicted. And that's what oppression does. It causes the cry of the poor to come unto him, unto God. And God hears it. Uh, he hears the cry of the afflicted. He hears what's going on. God knows God, under, God understands these things. And they, there's one hope, there's one understanding, and we know one thing, that God's going to take care of it. And, and it's due season, see. Just like the, the night has an end when the morning comes and the light comes forth and it makes known. The moon had its bright time and it goes into darkness, but it returns, see, and there's light, and there's understanding, even a lesser light, even something that men can understand and see. Even there's a greater understanding for those who seek it. And when he gives quietness, who then can condemn? 29. And when he hideth his face, or who then can behold him? Whether it be done unto a nation or unto a man alike. And when he gives quietness, when God calls us to rest, that quietness, that silence, like I said, that's what rest is. Everybody shuts up. We can hear the word of God then. Who then can condemn? Who's, who's going to hold God accountable when he brings this quietness, when he causes to return? See, that's not a pleasant thing. And when he abides his, hides his face, who then can hold, behold him? And when God's hiding his face, and what Elihu's saying, when God turns away and when God turns his face, we know what's happening. There's judgment. See, there's judgment in the earth. 
whether it be done unto a nation or unto a man alike. Whether God's punishing a whole nation or just a man, see, God has that ability. Everybody knows God has that ability. 30. That the godless man reign not, that there be none to ensnare the people. That the godless man reigns not. This one who, this godless, uh, with a little g, uh, because that's what most of them would have is that, that little g god. They, they got that, uh, something, they got something, something, there's something shadowing. There, I see, you know, there always is. That's what that little g is. That's something that's shadowy, getting in between you and God and the real understanding. Where God speaks directly to you, directly to your heart. This godless man of these ones that God don't speak to. That there be none to ensnare the people. And this ensnare, to trap, to take advantage of, to cause you to fall into a pit. See, and that's another thing that little G does. It causes you to fall into a pit. And it's the godless who set these things up. 31, for hath any said unto God, I have borne chastisement, though I offend not. Has anybody said this? Has anybody? Can you understand that? Well, Ella, who couldn't? He couldn't understand this fact that we'll find out that uh, uh, this is this is it. We, we say, well, we may not have understanding, but we can we view this as that our affliction as the lack of our understanding, saying, surely I I'm being afflicted. I must be sinning. I have to turn. Uh, I've not done nothing wrong. Uh, why am I being punished? I've borne this chastisement. I ain't done nothing. Well, to our understanding, that's what Elihu's saying. That which I see not teach you me. If I have done iniquity, I will do it no more. To admit the sin that, that we don't know we've committed. See? To admit to the sin that we don't know we've committed. Uh, that That... You know, the thing is, is we have an understanding according to that which God gives us. And if we accept an understanding of man, then we've accepted something that he, God gave for him. See, so may not be, and that's the same for us. Each man in his own path is corrected by God according to the understanding which God gave him. The law of God is something that us should be taught and from the beginning to, to it's a foundation for understanding it is a foundation to place knowledge it is uh the wisdom or this this work that man could do that brings forth wisdom or the abilities so to just admit to a sin that we haven't done we could find out that before there was the law there was no sin and when one gets the law or he has understanding then we get sin see then you get punished by god but to just say think that because you're in your transgression be saying accusing a person of being wicked uh evil to be a sinner when they don't have understanding nobody's given them the law nobody taught them the law that would be that would be wrong see but that's exactly what Elihu and them are doing. Uh, they, if Job's claimed that he doesn't know his sin, uh, and Job knows the law, Job has an understanding of who God is and what's going on. But they called him a liar. They've disrespected him. But Job's going to maintain his integrity. Thirty-three. Shall his recompense be as you will, for you loathest it, so that you must. Choose and not I, therefore speak what you know. Shall his recompense be as you will? Uh, well, God, is uh, judgment going to be like you want? Is God going to uh, punish you how you want to be punished? Uh, for you loathest it. This word low should be you refuse, you would reject it. Uh, why? Because it would not be fitting, see. And. You must choose or not I, because, see, God doesn't give us a choice in the punishment. Uh, we we find out it's our own heart that brings it upon us. It's like gravity. See, when you jump, you come back down. There's a law. There's a law, and you got to understand that. 
therefore speak what you know. Give, uh, and what well, Elihu says, speak. If you got uh, any understanding, tell us what you understand. 34, men of understanding will say unto me, yea, every wise man that hears me. Men of understanding will say, and this is what the men of understanding were going to say. Uh, we're going to find out. He's going to accuse Job. 35, Job speaks without knowledge, and his words are without discernment. Job speaking without knowledge. Job don't have no understanding. He's accusing Job straight out. And his words are without discernment. He, he hasn't fully considered everything. 36. Would that Job were tried unto the end because of his answering like a wicked man. And it would be Elihu's wish that Job was tried to the end, right to the last moment, right to the last hour, to the last breath is what he said. Uh, because as far as Elihu's concerned, Job's guilty. We'll find out Job's not done nothing. He's called to God. God is not answering. Job knows God is righteous. God is just. Job, Job knows he's going to stay with his God. He's going to stay. He's going to stay in his position until God moves him. 37. For he addeth rebellion unto his sin. He claps his hands among us and multiplies his words against God. He adds rebellion to his sin. He's turning from God. He's going away from God. We'll find it. Job wasn't going away. Job was questioning. Questioning. There's nothing wrong with questioning. See, if you want an answer, you question. To just accept things that at face value is not good enough. We have to question why is things like this. See, and Job's not multiplied his words against God. We're going to move forward. Chapter 35. Turn and return.